Last June, after having lived more or less four months of COVID, I was exhausted. I wasn't able to take advantage of the extra free time I had. And this caused me a strong sense of anger. I was angry with myself, not capable of exploiting time for personal interest. Now that I had the opportunity to read more, to be constantly work out, learn to play an instrument, I didn't do any of these things. So it was kind of a cycle. I woke up angry because of the thousand things to do during the day, and I went to bed angry and unhappy of what I did during the day, and so on. Angel built an angel and impeded me to be creative and find a way out. I had very low battery level, and I needed to recharge. But why am I telling you this? So, as Aristotle said, anyone can be angry, that is easy. But to be angry with the right person, at the right moment, in the right way and for the right purpose, that is not easy. And this is the point. I was unable to interpret and manage my emotions, to understand the cause of it and find a solution to restart. Just months later, I realized that the problem was not with emotionality. I mean, it's normal to feel angry for some reason, but the problem arises when you feel angry for such a long time for no real reason. So the question is, how can we bring intelligence to our emotion? How can we really be conscious of which emotions are justified and which, on the other hand, are parasitic. COVID-19 has drastically changed our life and way of thinking, our routines and projects. As a matter of fact, each of us came out of it differently, and we are conscious of it. However, we still struggle to restart. If we have everything under control, and we are aware of our inner transformation, how is that possible that we're having a hard time recharging ourselves? It may be the case that we are not really conscious of how human beings behave, how they face risky and unexpected situations, as COVID-19 has been for all of us. But more than anything else, how conscious we are of the role emotion play in the decision-making process. Maybe. Developing a deep self-awareness may help us. I mean, learn to pay attention to one external state. So, in order to do this, it is important to listen to yourself. Self-awareness must be understood as not only the option not to act on a feeling, but also to let it go. Do you remember when during the first months of quarantine, despite the government had assured us never closing supermarkets, there were huge queues outside them. We all definitely act on a feeling. Our emotional response or threat acted before our brain even understood what was happening and what to do rationally. So at this point, I bet you're asking yourself, okay, yeah, but why should I develop self-awareness? The answer is that emotion, when well exercised, have wisdom, especially when things are too important to be left to intellect alone. So, as we can understand, like it or not, we as human beings have emotion, and thank God we cannot get rid of them. Therefore, what's left to us is to develop an emotional well-being, kind of a balance. Of course, there is no need to avoid unpleasant feelings just to feel happy, but it's rather important that stormy feelings don't go unchecked. Now, I want to find out which is your way in dealing with emotion. Think about the old year we lived and the strong emotion you felt. Would you say to be a self-aware person, so 
conscious of your moods and limits, with a positive outlook on life, and aware of how to manage emotions. An engulfed person, swamped by emotion and helpless to escape them. Or an accepting person, aware of the feelings, but resigned to their acceptance, whether they are positive or negative. Think about these three categories and place yourself in one of them. Um, what about me? I would say to be a self-aware person, yet I'm far from reaching an emotional balance. Why so? The reason is that I've always attached a positive and negative meaning to the dualism mind-heart. The mind as the source of rationality and wisdom, while the heart as a source of emotion and impulsive. And it was exactly the conviction that emotion weren't a source of wisdom, the thing that impeded me to build deep and lasting friendship. I mean, think about your lifelong friends. Which was the moment in which you felt closer to them? It is exactly when you find an emotional connection that the bond is strengthened. But in my case, I failed to reach that tie. And it was the same when I got trapped in the angel loop in quarantine. But what helped me was to understand that we have a lost version attitude in our life, in the sense that if, for example, we lose an amount of money, we are much sadder than if we gain the same amount. So emotions, whether positive or negative, accustom us to live in a comfort zone, which becomes our routine and discourages us to live it. Therefore, even the unwillingness to leave the emotional comfort zone has to be understood as a lost aversion attitude. So, whenever you are pervaded by a strong feeling for a long time, start trusting and listening to them with consciousness. To feel rather than to think. And in doing so, that I realized that the anger I felt in quarantine was just a wake-up call. It was my organism trying to tell me, OK, stop, rest a little bit, and recharge yourself. So the point I want to make is, although human beings are endowed with rationality, in reality, our daily experience is emotion-driven. My personal experience in dealing with danger and emotional friendship are an example. Our future life will be influenced by how COVID has changed us. Therefore, developing a deep self-awareness will help us to recharge ourselves, to make the best decisions, and restart our life. What are we most afraid of? The unknown. But what if we knew the answer to life game? It would be so much easier, wouldn't it?